So actually, these these two bad guys we we, we identified in the, in the beginning are are the only two two obstacles plus plus some subdividing here. Yeah, so we are not going to prove this theorem today because it's it's quite complicated. We're just able, or we are just going to to prove formally that k5 and k33 both of them are not planar graphs, and there is a kind of simple proof for this. So we are just going to prove this implication that if the graph is, is planar, then it does not contain these two these two bad guys. And which this these two graphs are somehow sometimes called Kuratowski uh, minors. Um, like notion of minors is slightly different than notion of, of sub subdivision. Um, I'm not going to talk about it now, but but basically basically in the case of planar graphs, it's the same. In general, it can be different. So so these two these two things k5 and k33 are called Kuratowski minors. Yeah, so so we are not going to to prove the harder implication that if these two guys are, do not appear in the graph, then then it admits a planar rowing. It, it's much more much more difficult. Okay, so this is some kind of of basic introduction. So so we know that um, every every graph um, uh, is not planar. We we know some some characterization for it and. So so let us let us work slightly slightly more more about it. So let let me consider some some drawing and we will we will define some some more more terms for it. So we have a graph and for for the graph we we consider one specific drawing. So so let me consider. Um, Graph of, of a pick like like this, yes. And uh, now we can consider things which are called uh, faces. So we not we have vertices, we have edges, and now we are going to consider also something which is called faces, and they correspond to parts of of the plane which which contains no no graph drawn, and this this. These parts of the plane are split to to several areas, so we have one area in the, the middle. Maybe I will. Yeah, so we have one area here in the middle. Then we have another area here. We have, and the last area is is the big outer area of everything else. Yeah, so. Two, two of these areas are finite, and one of one of it is unbounded. So, so this, this um, some kind of outer area like this. Yeah, so something something like this. So these these areas are called uh, are called um, faces of of the graph, okay. and. Um, so in this case we have three faces and one one of it is, is uh, unbounded. This is called outside outside face. Uh, and so we have uh, these terms. But what is what is important that by different drawing we will obtain different faces, and not only not only from some kind of like like different shapes, but even uh, different different sizes and size of a face is number number of edges it it uh, surrounds uh, the face so so in this case this this yellow face is of size four this blue face is of size three and the outside uh, face is is a big one it's so uh, one two three four five six. Uh, yes, um, maybe maybe good question is um, how we we should count uh, these these uh, edges which are contained twice so, so let me let me let me count it twice so this is size one two three four five six seven eight nine 
Ah, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13? 13. Okay, hopefully. Um, 5. 5 means. Mm, 1, 2. Uh, oh, okay, we have 5. Five of of these these legs plus uh, I think so we have uh, five means ten plus five is fifteen uh, yes <laughs> counting is, is the most difficult thing here okay so mm, we have faces of of these these three three sizes now, of course what we can do is we can we can draw the same thing essentially the same thing with different sizes of faces so for example what we can do we can we can take this part this part here we can put it inside so we can obtain something something like this the this part is inside of the face and now now what happens that the inside face is of size 6 now and the outside face is of of size 13 and so the the faces and, and things like this are corresponding to to specific drawing so for different drawings we we can get different faces and different meaning not only not only the shape but also structure yeah so Another mm, quite natural thing would be would be it would be a question how how many edges so mm, how many edges can a planar graph has? Has or whether there is some kind of of um, of equality equality between between faces vertices and edges edges and so so there is um, theorem of, of Euler which which says that number of vertices Number of vertices, let me, let me denote it V. Number of faces, let me denote it F. And number of, of edges, let me denote it E. So, so what does it hold? That V plus F is always equal E plus 2. Uh, so, so this is theorem of theorem of Euler quite right here quite quite simple and also the proof is proof is very very easy so so for the proof we are going to to do it by by mathematical induction so for the first step we, we will start with um, somewhat somewhat simplest graphs yes. and so also this holds only for for connected connected planar graphs um, yeah, so, so things like like this are not allowed and if we would like to consider non-connected um, planar graphs we would have to to add here something like like uh, 1 plus k where k is number of, of these parts so in this case k would be equal to yeah but uh, this is some kind of like i no one's uh, we don't really have to care about it because in most of the cases we are always working with uh, planar graphs because they are mo more natural and most of the problems can be can be split and split and solved for each component separately now for example our problem which which graphs admit a planar drawing we don't really care about components because we can we can just check planarity of each component and if all of them are planar graph is planar so, so it's quite simple in the case of, of non-connected graphs and there are not, not many problems which would which would be difficult if, if non-connected graphs would be introduced. Uh, so 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 something like this. So so the proof starts with the most simple uh, planar connected graph, 
with having the, the least amount of edges and uh, such graphs are, are called three and three is a graph which has the minimum number of, of edges on n and vertices yes so something something like that so, so a lot of a lot of definitions of, of three one of them is that it does not have any any cycle so, so something something like this is, is not allowed in the graph so so this this uh, every tree is square a planar graph we can we can draw it quite easily and we just need to check Euler's formula for for this this guy here so for a tree we have number of vertices is equal to some some quantity called uh, let's call it n now uh, how many how many faces does the tree has only only one it's the outside face outer face and for the number of edges it has uh, number of vertices minus one edge it's an, it's actually not so, not so difficult to to see it um, for example you could you could prove it by by induction that you um, that you take your tree you remove one one end vertex like this, you in, you decrease the number of vertices and number of edges by one, then your induction hypothesis holds, and then you add it back, and so so the di the difference between these two quantities will remain the same. Now, so if we if we put it together, we obtain something like n plus one is equal n plus one, which is okay. So the theorem works for for trees. Now we have some some planar graph, which is not tree, so it has cycles, and maybe maybe it looks something something like this. So what we do is that we pick an arbitrary edge, and always there is some edge which doesn't make the uh, the graph disconnected because we would like to keep it connected during the whole proof. So we pick one one such edge, so we avoid edges which, which would split the graph two parts, but there always has to be one if the graph is not three. And so we pick it and we remove it from the graph. So we make the graph smaller. And this is this is the thing how, how induction works, that we make our graph smaller, now we use induction hypothesis that V plus F is equal E plus two. Like this and now we return the edge back so for this guy here it holds so we take the edge back and now now what happened so number of vertices is, is still the same number of faces was increased by one because in this in this um, area here in this in this area here there was one face before now we added edge here so so this face is split to to another face uh, so we obtain one more face than before so we have we we plus f plus one uh, on, on the left hand side and on the right hand side the number of edges was increased by one which still holds uh, so by, by induction we were able to by induction by the number of the edges we were able to prove that Euler's formula holds for every every planar graph which is which is kinda kinda simple and as we will see in a, in a second it's, it's also very very useful yeah so so we know that this formula holds, but but what does it say about about a uh, number of edges of of the planar graph? So what we could do is to is to imagine some kind of of extremal planar graph. So what we are going to do basically is to take some uh, some planar graph like like this. And now we are going to to add edges to this planar graph. We are still going to to keep it planar, and we are going to add edges and add edges. And at some moment we are going to to stop, because it won't be possible. 
So we start and we pick two, two vertices and connect them by edge and then pick two another vertices and connect them by edge and, and we proceed like this for some time 